Uh, Kevin Newman uh, is with us, and you can give us a better sense of how this majority happened, though, Kevin. Yeah, it really was something, Lisa. I mean, uh, in our previous parliament, we talked about uh, suburban votes, rural votes, urban votes. The Liberals have votes all over the place. Uh, but as we looked across the country with Nick Nanos here from Nanos Research, one of the things that we noticed was that uh, the cities in particular all went Liberal. Whether it was the city of Toronto, uh, you saw behind me, whether it was the, uh, the island of Montreal or the uh, city of uh, Vancouver as well. And as we dig down here, take a look at what the island of Montreal looks like tonight after all the votes are almost been counted there. It is a sea of red, Nick. Uh, we see the Bloc Québécois here. They had a pretty good night, actually. They almost doubled their number of seats and just a very small number of New Democrats left on the island of Montreal. Let's move across, if we can, to uh, the way that the uh, greater Toronto area looks. A complete wipeout for the uh, New Democrats in the city of Toronto. It is completely uh, red as we move across the country again. And as we move over to Vancouver as well, Metro Vancouver, great swaths of red. The uh, New Democrats able to hold on to some areas uh, and the Conservatives, uh, the areas out towards uh, Hope here. Uh, but one of the things we want to look at here, Nick, is the uh, seat change uh, across the country in those areas. And as you can see, uh, 604, 416, 514, significant growth in, in all the cities, but the rest as well, significant growth. This is a very, very broad mandate. Oh, absolutely. It's a broad mandate that cuts right across the board. What I found interesting is that when we looked at the beginning of the campaign, that the New Democrats were actually pretty strong in Montreal and Toronto and Vancouver. And the strategic voting just basically squeezed them and killed the Conservatives at the same time. It was a political two-for-one for the Liberals in terms of double impact and converting seats into the red column. I mean, take a look at this, uh, the national vote change here. Liberals before, uh, these are, uh, this is popular vote, Nick. Uh, before 19 for the Liberals, they're up at 40. Uh, the cons at 32, and what's interesting here is the, the, the break in the popular vote between the Liberals and the Conservatives isn't that big. Yeah, it's only eight points. And you know, you look at the seat count and it's massive. What does this mean? This means that the Liberals ran a highly efficient campaign. They had a bespoke dialogue, a tailored dialogue with voters through social media and the internet and so forth, and they were able to activate the change and they were the agents for change. So they took a little bit of an advantage, eight point advantage, and they converted that into a massive parliamentary advantage. That's quite something, and that talks, to, as you say, to the ability to get that vote out, which they certainly did tonight. Nick, thank you very much. I'm going to bring in uh, Ruben Sioni now. He is with uh, Enveronics Analytics to take a little bit deeper dive in what one of the uh, great dynamics of this night has been. Uh, we talked to Nick about the 416 and some of the demographics. Rupin, let's look again at this greater Toronto area. One of the great questions of this campaign was uh, the culture vote that had sustained the Conservatives, that Stephen Harper spent so much time, particularly in the Toronto area, also in the Greater Vancouver area, Metro Vancouver area. What uh, was the dynamic there? What voters changed, what multi-ethnic voters changed from Conservative to uh, Liberal in this vote? Well, Kevin, what we did is we, we looked at the, the segments, the, the voter segments that were very close in the race from the last election. And we identified five, and they were all culturally diverse uh, voter, voter segments. And then we looked at the, the, the ridings that had a very close race, where the Liberals just came second. Mm -hmm. And all those segments came up. So there were 15 ridings. Okay, let's I take a look at yeah, another can... big wall here. So this is in the greater Toronto area. These were the five demographic segments that you identified were the swing uh, tonight in the greater Toronto area. That's right. They represent about a million voters. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, there's sort of two themes to it here. There's the South Asian achievers, Newcomers Rising These are the, and South Asian Society. These are three segments that are obviously very heavily South Asian. Um, large numbers of voters. And, you know, it's interesting that, uh, that this, with all the play around how the Conservatives were reaching out to uh, the, the, the multicultural vote, yep. yes, these segments never quite made the decision. They, they, they teetered on the edge. So it was really a battle between the Liberals and the Conservatives for these voters last time around. And clearly this time uh, in those ridings, they went Liberal, so, so did they. It would be interesting to find out, and I guess we will, uh, Rupin, in the days ahead, whether the NECAB vote uh, had an impact, particularly in the Indo-Canadian community, uh, and what impact that had on the disintegration, frankly, of the Conservative vote among that community. Uh, and let's take a look, as we have tonight, uh, at the power grid. Uh, we start started this night with the 41st Parliament. This is the shape of the 42nd Parliament. As you can see, uh, as we move from Newfoundland to PEI, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, these are all the seats. 
All of them are calling in at this point. Uh, all of them looking pretty firm. Uh, we are now, I guess, almost 1 o'clock in the east. Uh, the Bloc Québécois started with only a couple of seats. They've had a significant gain. You can see the Liberals can claim to have seats in every province of the country, every, even the north. They have all three seats up here in the north. Uh, and the Conservatives have been uh, reduced to a party in uh, Quebec. Uh, they have a stronghold in Ontario, as they did actually when they were the old reform, uh, a little bit of Manitoba in here. And the New Democrats also spread out across the country, except for Atlantic Canada. They have uh, seats in every province as well. So it's an, interesting, it's an interesting grid as we fill in the 42nd Parliament, Lisa. Mm, stunning when you compare it to how this night began. Kevin Newman, thank you for that.